Now then, descend into the depths. Turn on our flashlight again real quick. Ooh, what is all of this? Lots and lots of dead bats, but no monsters. That's interesting. This could be useful for Jimmy. In fact, what Jimmy is going to see this as is a good place to leave a bunch of things. And that means we're going to be dropping everything we don't need to carry on us right at the moment, which is going to mean most of our stuff. We're going to drop all of those things. I'm going to get and turn off the flashlight. Go back upstairs. Now normally I would like to butcher all of those corpses, but at the moment, in fact, actually, come to think of it, I think I will do exactly that. Because that will give us a great deal of meat and a little bit of experience with survival, which will be handy as time goes on. Now unfortunately, one thing to know is that we're not going to be able to carry all of this meat and over time it's going to rot. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our inventory management screen here to move all of the meat to somewhere more useful for us. Uh, specifically we're going to put it all over here by the doorway. As I may have mentioned this meat will eventually go bad because well does that. It doesn't last forever. Anyone who has ever left meat out on a counter overnight remembers just how bad it probably smelled in the morning. Well, you can imagine how much worse it is when you don't have a refrigerator at all. So what we're going to do with all of this meat is we're going to leave the meat in one location and we're going to leave the bones in another because the bones will be useful for longer than the meat. Now, we're going to go ahead and eat something right now. We're going to eat some blueberries. I'm going to drop this mushroom here. I'm not really keen on eating random mushrooms I found in the woods, obviously. That's not usually a smart thing to do. So, obviously, I am going to uh, prefer not to do that whenever possible. It looks like also, ooh, we have another monster, a fat zombie. That's not going to be delightful. Ooh, there's something in that bush. Yes, a heavy stick. Okay going to drop this heavy stick with the other heavy stick that I have. And I'm going to wield my combat knife again, because it's probably my best weapon by far. And we are going to slowly, carefully approach this location here. Now, you can see that we have a zombie come. Oh, we have a zombie following us. I didn't even see that. I'm going to throw a rock at his head. No, I'm not. I don't have any rocks. Okay, well, we're going to lure him this way and use the terrain to our advantage. Zombies are not very smart, so we're going to wait for him to come over this bush. You see that? And then we're going to attack him with our combat knife. Twice, three times, back off. Because we are faster than the zombies. Because we, after all, are not dead. Moving, come on, there. There we go. Now I'm going to take a moment to butcher this zombie while the other zombie comes closer. That zombie has a bunch of things on them. Apparently that was a girl zombie. She was wearing a dress, t-shirt, low top tennis shoes, panties, and a bra, as well as a bunch of tainted meat, which she was obviously not wearing, but which were a part of her. The tainted meat is not good for you. I am not going to be eating that. Not if I can help it. Now I will start to eat it if I begin to starve but I would obviously prefer not to have to. Swing at the zombie a few times. Oop, he destroyed that particular brush, apparently. Come on, there you go. You, notice, you may notice that my combat knife keeps getting stuck in the zombies. That's because as a cutting weapon, it can, in fact, get stuck into their body and, well, yeah. It tends to be messy, but as long as we get to, as long as we get it back, that's all that matters. Now, it looks like ooh. Ooh, a zombie child. That's not delightful. No one ever likes to hear of a child in danger. This is a child that is rather less in danger and more long dead. Unfortunately, we're going to have to do something about that. So, <sighs> 
missed, I dodged, I missed. Zombie children are dangerous, and this is part of why. They're very hard to hit, and they can make you bleed. Unfortunately, the zombie child is now dead. Now, how did I... Yep, the zombie child corpse is right underneath me. I am going to butcher that child. I hate to say that, but it was necessary. If you do not butcher or smash the corpses, they will rise again, and, well, obviously that's not optimal. Uh, now, this zombie we're seeing down here, the light purple sea. You may notice that that's how they're representing different various kinds of monsters, is by different colored and sizes of letters. We were also, we were bleeding there for a moment, but it looks like we got uh, better fairly quickly, so that's good. I didn't need to use any bandages, which is also good because I didn't have any. The Shrieker zombie will make noise and draw other zombies in if I don't kill it quickly, so it's a good thing that I did now. I'm checking these zombies and what they're carrying because sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes the zombies are carrying useful items. This here is a broken window because, well, the child zombie, apparently zombies do not know how to use doors. Now, I'm going to try and explore this house quietly without attracting that smoke zombie over there. Yes, those of you who played Left 4 Dead probably recognize what that means. It's not, it's not the same thing, but they are similar in, in the sense that they are surrounded by a cloud of smoke. That's not a lot of fun to breathe. Now, ooh, biscuit and a small box of raw lasagna. That could be useful later. And a frying pan. I'm going to leave the waffle iron behind. That's not very useful for me. Ooh, pizza. A crispy cranberry soda. Cream soda. A uh, gallon jug of milk. I don't want the rotten milk, obviously, but I do want the jug. So, I'm going to take all of this. Check that. Oh, that's a sink. It's empty. I'm going to continue to check this house. Oh, we'll take the glasses. Actually, you know, why would we take the glasses? We don't have any use for glasses. We can see fine. This here is a backpack, which we already have one, so I'm going to leave this one behind. Uh, let's see here. And flares. Hmm. No, I think I will do fine without them. Uh, U.S. Weekly? No. We already have our one book to set a fire with. A matchbook? That'll be handy. We already have a lighter, but you can never have enough ways to make fire. Uh, another book? We don't care. That's some downstairs. Now we're going to go downstairs, and once again, we're going to take a look around. Oh, look at that. This is awesome. A firefighter zombie immediately downstairs. And he's joined by a friend. So, oh, look at this. This is someone's illicit marijuana growing operation. Ooh, that zombie is taking a lot of damage. He, uh, he has some fairly decent armor, so... We're gonna try not to get in a fight with both of the zombies at once. Um, the firefighter is a little bit slower than the other zombie. Oh good, he's dead. That's excellent. The other zombie, we're going to have him stand on the other zo on the firefighter's corpse. It just helps me out a little bit. Ooh, that zombie bit me in the right arm. You may notice that there are damage numbers that uh, that will tell me how much damage I'm doing, how much harm I'm committing upon the zombies. I don't know the exact hit point totals for the various zombies. Uh, I know that I, as a survivor, I have hit point totals for different parts of my body. Zombies, on the other hand, seem to have just a general hit point total. Um, because they don't seem to have body parts. Now then, ooh, look at this. This is interesting. A halligan bar. That's like a crowbar, if I remember right. And a shovel. I remember I wanted a shovel. A medical ambule? That's something I might want. And let's see here. I'll take this soda. A Playboy. Well, what the heck. You don't have to be able to read to know what a Playboy is, I suppose. Now, you may recall I mentioned this was a marijuana growing operation. To prove that, there are cannabis and hemp seeds everywhere. Well, those are exactly what you think they are. I am taking them because, well, I don't really know why. I was going to say I could trade them the to NPCs later, but I can't actually come to think of it because, well, there are no NPCs. 
but I'm a little bit, a uh, little bit of a hoarder when it comes to this game. So I'm going to at least drop all of this in the same spot. So, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's there. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look in my inventory. Okay, and I'm going to dump out the rotten milk on the floor here. Gallon drug of milk. Unload it. Pour, mi pour milk out on the ground. Say yes. Now, what that means is that I now have an empty gallon jug, an empty plastic canteen. Those are, well, obviously exactly what they say they are. I'm going to eat my other apple. Uh, I'm eating my fruit because I don't currently have a reliable source of water, and fruit will quench my thirst just a little bit because if it's all juicy and whatnot. Now, I can, obviously, gather water from various plart, various places in this... I don't need these socks. Uh, from various places in houses. Um, ooh, cough syrup. Well, darn it, I can't really carry it right now. Uh, is there anything I can drop? No. So, what I will do is I will take what I've stashed, what I've gathered so far, and I will stash it over this way. I'm going to run back to my cave and stash my currently gathered equipment. Because I want to keep my stash safe. Now, I would like to have a source of light in here. Unfortunately, I do not outside of my flashlight, which I had forgotten to turn off. Oops. I'm going to drop... I'm not going to drop everything here. I'm going to drop my frying pan and my exacto knife and my shovel for now. Um, I'm also going to drop the Playboy and the medical ampule. And I'm going to keep everything else on me because this halligan bar will be useful for getting into houses. I'm going to drop the lighter. Uh, if I have a matchbook, I don't really need a lighter. Uh, let's see, what else can I drop? I'm going to go ahead and drop the soda, because those are not perishable. So I don't need to carry them with me at all times. And that should be good. Now I'm going to go back upstairs. I'm going to continue looting that house. Now, <coughs> you may, if you have, you know, well ever played this game or any other game like it, or if you have ever considered what you what you might do in a zombie apocalypse, you may wonder why I'm not gathering literally everything and hoarding all of the things. Well, there is a reason for that. That reason is primarily that I'm only taking items that might be useful to me right now. Because I'm not playing a character that can utilize all of the items, then there is little need Oop, I have water now. I am going to fill this water into my objects. I am not, however, going to drink any of that water because it's toilet water. You will notice that is a toilet. I'm not going to be drinking the toilet water until I can boil the toilet water. Anyway, as I was saying, you know what? Moccasins might actually come in handy later. As I was saying, you, I'm only gathering items that might come in handy eventually. And that's because I want to leave items behind that other characters might be able to use later. Because I'm going to be continuing to play in this world, after all, and I'm not really expecting Jimmy to survive all that long. Truthfully, he just doesn't really have the set of skills that would be... Uh, useful for long-term survival, unless I was just being a nomad and wandering randomly through the woods. Oh, look at that. That is a car engine. Specifically, a 0.63 liter one-cylinder engine. So it's not a car engine. It's more of a moped engine, I guess. I don't really know much about cars, but that's what I'm assuming. Anyway, the uh, thing is, is that I don't have much ability to learn things with Jimmy Gerhardt here. I have a zombie who's slowly approaching my position. Um, I don't have much of an opportunity to learn things from books, and that's how you learn many of the best recipes. For example, that's the best way to learn how to craft a bow, is through a book that teaches you how to use bows. I obviously can't do that. Ooh, a cash card. Now, that doesn't have much on it, but Jimmy understands that cash is useful. In the near future of Cataclysm, 
paper cash has been almost eliminated and replaced with the digital electronic cash cards. Um, these are obviously used to buy things, primarily from vending machines, uh, which, if I find one, I will show you. Now, that thing off to the left over there, where the zombies are coming from, that is a car. We will uh, be using those, uh, using more things involving those cars eventually, I am certain. I love the cars. <laughs> okay, now I am currently uh, dealing with this zombie. This is a swimmer zombie. Um, one thing to know about the swimmer zombies, well, they're wearing a wetsuit. And it has webbed hands and feet. God only knows why. But I killed it. So, yes, I'm going to go ahead and butcher, even though there are hostels nearby, because it doesn't take that long to butcher. And it will let me go ahead and grab things. Salie and I dropped. I don't need those. Uh, I don't need any of these clothes. So, well, the hiking boots, maybe. Do I already have... I'm already wearing normal boots, and the hiking boots are already ripped up. And So I think I'll be fine. Okay, this zombie over here. Come on, zombie. We're going to deal with you. Oh, there's another child zombie over there. Goody. Oh, and the smoker is coming for me, too. I'm going to just pulp that corpse. Check it. No. Pulp. Novel. Okay. Cash card. And now I'm going to run away. I do not want to fight a smoker zombie. Oh, and I am attracting more zombies. I am not interested in fighting a smoker zombie if I can help it. And it looks like... Oh, a zombie master? What is that? That is... It's once human. Its features have tightened. Its lips pulled back into an unnatural grin, revealing rows of blackened teeth beneath its large, piercing eyes. It stands tall. Its movements are fluid and tightly controlled. Is there a way to scroll this up and down? If there is, I don't know what it is. Um, shoot. I'm assuming that this is going to be a scary, scary beastie. And unfortunately, it has locked onto me and is going to follow me into the woods. That means that I'm going to have to do quite a bit of kiting and hope that I can defeat it. Oh. Oh, that's what it does. If you'll notice the most recent message there, the black mist around the zombie master grows, and that zombie became a spitter zombie. The spitter zombie is a direct rip from Left 4 Dead, it spits acid, and when it dies, it melts into a puddle of acid. I do not want this thing to actually start spitting acid, because that's very unpleasant. So I'm going to kill this zombie here. I managed to kill it before I took any damage. That's good. Now I'm going to have to fight this zombie master. I'm going to do it on the tree. I'm hoping I can kill it before something horrible happens to me. Uh, I'm managing to dodge most of its attacks, but, oh, another zombie just became a Shrieker zombie. Goody. How badly am I hurting it? Okay, I am hurting him badly, much worse than he's hurting me. Only problem is, is that I'm quickly getting surrounded, and that's not good. I am, however, getting a lot of decent combat experience out of this. Oh, I killed the zombie master. Now I have to kill this Shrieker zombie. Okay, Shrieker Zombie is dead. There was another zombie. I'm going to kill him too. Come on, zombie. There you go. Okay. My armor protected me from that bite. That's good. Okay, we're going to butcher these corpses quickly before very bad things happen. <laughs> I do not want that master zombie to wake up. He looks like he had a lot of stuff on him, though. Soldering iron, some chewing gum. Sure, we'll take some chewing gum. And some garden, garden shovel and some bolt cutters. Those should be interesting. Might be handy. Okay, well, that could have gone much worse. And considering that uh, that could have gone a whole lot worse, and this video is running on quite a bit, I think I'm going to stop my first recording session here. <sighs> I want to say that I appreciate any of my viewers for sticking around through my video. I will probably end up splitting this into two parts because it is about 40 minutes long. And hopefully, with any luck, I will have them up and ready within a decent amount of time. And, well, I suppose by the time you see this, they will be up and ready, won't they? <laughs> anyway. I appreciate everyone for joining me for a game of Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. I'm going to return to my cave while I talk. And 
I hope that you are all enjoying your time with me. In the future, I am hoping to expand to playing other games as well. I have a few ideas for what else to play. Cataclysm just was the first and easiest idea I had. I'm going to pick up this rock. And seemed to be the one that had not necessarily the most potential. I better eat something. I have a raw potato. I'll eat that. And it seemed to be the one that had uh, that was going to be the easiest for me to do, both technically and in terms of my personal knowledge of the game. I do know quite a bit about this game. I am uh, I have been playing it quite a bit, and I would like to be able to show it off to people. And it's also a game that, once I get into it, might be more interesting to other people. Um, in in a short time, I'm hoping to expand to other more graphical games that might hold other people's interests a little bit better. But uh, in the meantime, uh, thank you again for watching my videos, and in the meantime, well, don't let the world come to an end. Goodbye.